What's up, y'all? Sean of the Shred here, and uh, I know that uh, this kind of looks like a mess, but really, it's uh, organized chaos. So, uh, what I've got going on here is I'm about to jump into my very first RC build. I went ahead and uh, picked up this Sakura uh, D5MR uh, electric drift car, and I... Uh, I've never actually put one of these together before from scratch, so I elected to go ahead and get the unassembled kit so I could do it that way. Um, but yeah, I uh, went and uh, found out that there's actually a drift track and uh, RC drift shop hangout, like all kinds of awesomeness right in uh, my own town, which I did not know, so um, they may have trouble keeping me out of that place now, so... Um, I am about to join the dark side, and um, this is my get started with it process. So I'm going to go ahead and jump into this. I've actually got this all set up here to where I have uh, gone through, and I've highlighted where I need green slime and thread locker and uh, something else. Uh, I'll... Oh, my upgrade parts. I highlighted the upgrade parts in yellow so that when I get to them, I'll remember. Because, again, first timer. Uh, so I got my bags laid out here. I've got uh, one here, which is the diff that I'm about to build. Uh, two right back there, which is the chassis, just because it's a little bit bigger. And uh, then bag three with my upgrade parts uh, taped to it. And then basically four, five, six, seven, eight um, laid out there so I can grab them easily. So I'm going to uh, jump into this and uh, put my mechanical prowess to good use with a miniature scale RC drift car. Okay, so after looking over the instructions real quick to get a rundown of everything, I went ahead and laid out all my parts here so that way I can quickly see them and access them. All right, so I went ahead and got my two halves built here. I've got the gasket in with the uh, bevel gear on uh, that side ready to go in. I've got the housing with the um, other set of gears in here with the cross pin. I went ahead and seated that down in and uh, made sure that whenever I spun the little bottom gear that all of the gears in there actually spin as well. So that way it's seated. I do have some oil in there now, but I do need to fill it up now to uh, cover the rest of that. And then uh, put the pieces together and screw it down, and I will have my completed assembled diff. Alright, so went ahead and uh, put my oil in there and made sure all the gears were covered. Gave it a few spins to make sure that all the air bubbles were out and that all the... Uh, Gears were still engaging, which they are, so we are good to go. Time to put the two halves together. All right, <clears throat> so bag one turned into that diff right there, and it's ready to go. So I have now laid out bag two and am uh, ready to get building on that. I'm still working on bag two. Uh, it's coming along pretty well for the most part. I have gotten the suspension arms built, and uh, most of the pieces are ready to go on there. Okay, so I am on to bag three, which I'm excited about because the highlighted yellow are the ones that I have uh, upgrade parts for. So I've went ahead and laid out my parts here. Um, I've still got some pieces from bag two that actually get used in step four. So I went ahead and moved those aside, uh, put my chassis aside, which I've got the suspension arms on it and they move freely as they should with no issues, no binding. So I um, went ahead and laid all this out. Now what I'm gonna do basically is pull out the pieces that I'm not gonna be using, uh, like this uh, rear bulkhead here. Um, I've got the replacement of those in aluminum there. Um, I've got front bulkhead here, steering bridge here, and steering arms here all in aluminum. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick all those out of here and put them back in the box. And then I'll be ready to build out uh, this next step. It's a new day and I'm still working on the, uh, the D5. I um, got that far and um, it was like, I don't know, 
two thirty in the morning and I had to go to work so the next morning. So, um, I put a pause on that and, uh, I'm about to resume that now. All right. So I'm back at it again. And, uh, I just finished off, uh, step three and uh, installing the, uh, front and rear bulkheads, um, specifically in this step was the rear and, uh, these parts right here, I replaced the rear bulkheads with uh, the aluminum pieces. And it's hard to tell from the placement of this, but I can't tell if that pin right there is supposed to go across the bottom. Because if so, these are way too big to thread into that. Uh, but I can't tell if this bar in the rear bulkhead goes in the one I've got it in or if it's supposed to go in the lower I hope that's the right spot and if not then I guess I'll get to learn all this in reverse um, at least to that step so now I'm on this one where I am going to install the upper decks those are up here Okay, all right, let me go ahead and organize up this little workstation because this is how I left it last night, so. All right, y'all, so uh, I have been straight stumped for like the last 10 minutes trying to put this upper deck in, and uh, so I think I have figured out that I actually installed this thing, this whole front bulkhead section, backwards, so... Um, I guess the lesson from that is once you get super tired, uh, don't try and push through it just because you want to try and get it done. Um, I should have probably went to bed last night at like midnight, but I stayed up to like 2.30 working on all this because I just couldn't stop. And uh, yeah, so I found out today that I put this on backwards. Yeah, so I'm going to undo that and then put it the right way. Okay, so... As uh, I'd mentioned earlier, I uh, made the mistake last night uh, while I was tired of putting in my front bulkhead uh, backwards and uh, now trying to put it in the right way, I'm seeing that it's hitting, which maybe that's why I put it in backwards last night because I thought it was the wrong way. When I put it in this way, it doesn't hit on anything and I can bolt it down no problem. When I put it in this way, it no longer sits flush. The... Uh, back right here where it's got the notches on the aluminum for these mounting arms is hitting so I can get the front bolts to line up but the back ones don't and currently this moves freely the steering arm but if I actually take this and force it down in there which now you can see it also narrows up this up front now this steering arm essentially is stuck in place and doesn't really want to move um, when it's you know like that so I'm thinking maybe that the arms that these front bulkhead aluminum pieces um, need to have these pieces upgraded as well in order to fit maybe I don't know glad I ran up to the shop just a FYI for anybody out there who is building the uh, Sakura D5 MR kit if you get the um, Aluminum front bulkheads, uh, they will not go in place with the stock front suspension mounting arm bracket right here. Um, you can see right there that it is hitting um, that little lip that's right there. And unfortunately, you don't get to go all the way down. If you force it in there, then it, it actually bends the two brackets in. And now you can't line them up with the holes. There's no way. So the solution for that is that you can shave down the mounting tab on the inside, I was told. Um, but what I did was I just went ahead and picked up the three racing um, front aluminum suspension mounts. And then also the suspension mount nuts, uh, which are, let me zoom out which are uh, those guys there. Um, yeah, so you need those if you get this front bulkheads. And why not? It's like $23. <laughs>
get some actual measurements on it uh, with the digital caliper here. Um, so the um, front bulkheads that I got right here, they've got that little groove in them at the bottom right there. And that's where the uh, suspension, suspension mount tab has to go to clear. 3.7 millimeters is that gap in there. So <clears throat> 3.7 is your clearance. Uh, your old or original suspension mounts are 6.4 millimeters tall on that corner that they need to clear. Replacement suspension mounts that I got, the aluminum ones, have a thickness of 3.4 on the suspension arm side. So anyway, um, so that gives you like 0 0.3, 0 0.3 millimeters clearance. Do I say 3.6, 3.7? Yeah, 3.7 down to 3.4. So yeah, versus this one being, you know, 6.3. Anyway, all right, let me put my arm down here. So the bad thing is um, that in the process of getting these suspension arms, uh, it takes away the clearance. So now my suspension arm with the washers that are supposed to go in there, the one millimeter washers, it doesn't move freely. It is got some tension and uh, it sticks wherever I want it. That did not work. Um, I did go ahead and check out. I have a half millimeter shim that I put in there, and the other is still a one millimeter. Um, when I went ahead and put that in here and uh, put the aluminum and bolted it up, uh, that one works. This one moves freely, and it's just got the slightest amount, like, I don't know, probably a quarter of a millimeter play in it, which I don't know if that's okay or acceptable. I don't recall if there was uh, any, you know, um, movement in the other ones um, with the old mounting tabs. Uh, um, I do have some more shims on the way. I've actually, uh, I got some purple ones that I'm going to put in. Uh, the only thing I'm not sure about is whether or not the, like, one millimeter in front and a half in back will, will um, you know, throw off the suspension or anything like that. Um, I, I don't know the consequences of that yet because I haven't played with it, so... Uh, but anyway, I'm going to go ahead and take this off and put some of the um, smaller shims in there and see if I can get it to move freely. All right, so I went ahead and swapped out those shims, and that solved my problem. Now my arms move freely, and they've got just the same amount pretty much of play that the other one did with the um, little plastic piece. So uh, with that swapped out, now I've got free movement of those, and that should be good. I went ahead and swapped out the rears as well, so that way I could get that uh, pop a color in the back with those shims as well all right so got some more pieces on got my uh, servo installed and uh, connected up there um, well I mean you know connected to the suspension anyway definitely not connected to anything else so uh, but I got that on um, I got stuck for a little bit on the motor mounts and then also uh, there was another bar that was supposed to attach in through here uh, somewhere but with these aluminum um, bulkheads that I got, uh, it doesn't have the same spot to be able to screw it in. So I wasted a lot of time going backwards in steps trying to figure out where I went wrong only to find out that um, you don't use it on the aluminum ones because there's not a spot for it. So anyway, I'm uh, on to step eight and about to build some front suspension. So, got a couple of pieces laid out and then uh, about to... Turn this little pile of stuff into some functional cool suspension. I have graduated to step 10. I am ready for oil damper assembly. Went ahead and set out some of the parts here. Um, got the uh, other bags here still ready to go. I uh, actually took my little uh, makeshift paint booth here and uh, flipped it over, put some holes in it. So now I've got myself uh, some shock holders so that I can fill it fill it with oil just gotta organize out these parts now and um, you know push back some of this other stuff I was working on uh, and then I'll be ready to go ahead and get this uh, shock assembly plant going and uh, pay my workers nothing because it'll be me 
All right, so I built out the uh, bottom half of my shocks and I went ahead and flipped over my little makeshift paint booth here. I got some holes in it so that way when I flip it over it turns into a uh, DIY shock tower. So uh, I've got them filled up here. I'm about to go ahead and move the plungers up and down. That way I can get all the air bubbles out. Uh, put the rest of the uh, parts on it, close them up, put the springs on, and then I should have suspension on my D5. I mean, you know. Um, actual like you know hold the frame off the ground suspension <laughs> <laughs> fucking farva <laughs> all right i uh, got the shocks topped off and uh just letting the air bubbles rise to the top now <laughs> so that they can all um you know be done with and dispersed and uh, let them pop so uh, anyway waiting on that and while i am i'm watching super troopers <laughs> <laughs> to uh anyway uh back to back to building all right so i had to uh go back to my uh servo and take it out i actually actually had it mounted in there um backwards apparently uh from the diagram when i was looking at it it looked like i had it facing the correct way but it's kind of hard to to tell on that dark uh copy right there with you know looking at the arm and the little ball underneath there um, I had this all facing the right way and the thing swung the correct direction, but um, I had it backwards with the uh, steering arm apparently on the wrong way. So once I turned it and then flipped it, uh, now I've actually got the ability to turn my wheels all the way, which is awesome because it would not do that before. And that took me probably, I would say, an hour to uh, take apart, flip one way, try it, flip it another way, try it, like, got to the point where I was super frustrated and was about to reach out to the internet for help, and uh, then I just figured, you know, let me keep trying and see if I can figure it out, and eventually I did, so, yay! Uh, now I just gotta get the rest of my electronics on. All right, so I went ahead and painted up my uh, stock wheels. These were white. I went ahead and sprayed them with that cast iron silver gray color and then put a translucent purple um, on top of them. So it's actually got a gray look when they're head on, but when the light hits it, then it changes to more of that purpley look in some areas. So it just kind of depends on where you're looking and how you're looking at it. Um, the face kind of looks machined as like a gray color and the rest is purple, so... Uh, I think that looks pretty cool, and it also goes really well on the lug spikes, which there's little lug spikes, and I was able to keep those separate and still get paint, you know, where it needed to be around with the spray, so um, I think that looks pretty dope, and I uh, went ahead and popped those in. I left them just lipped out because I don't want to push them in too far, um, so I'm going to leave them like that for now. These probably will not be the rims that I run. I think I'm going to pick up another set. Uh, here in a minute when I go uh, to uh, Drift America RC. Um, but these will do awesome, I think, for just looks, you know, and sitting there, especially with the lug spikes on them. So um, I think that looks pretty dope and uh, definitely like the look of those better than I like the all white. Um, I think that looks a lot better. And uh, especially, like I said, since, you know, it kind of, it's dark, but it's purple, but it's got a gray look to it, so looks pretty dope. I like it. I stuck them in front of a fan, basically um, one of my oscillating fans for uh, about 24 hours, and now they seem to be fully cured. I was able to press them in there, no fingerprints, nothing like that. They're not sticky, so I uh, got me a altered set of stock wheels. <clears throat> just got back from Drift America RC and picked up the last uh, pieces of my car that I needed here to get it all put together. So uh, I'm going to uh, get this all taken care of now. I've got my chassis here ready to go. I just need to throw the motor on, the ESC, uh, the receiver, the gyro, and wire it all up. Um, electrical is not my strong point, so hopefully it does not explode. All right, so I've got most of my electronics on. Went ahead and took care of the wiring. Um, you know, kind of made it look nice there. I'm working on the uh, top ones up here. I went ahead and shortened them down so that they're not so freaking long. 
Um, and now I've just basically clipped them in place. That way I can put a little bit of solder on the end of it and you can kind of see it. I'm also going to put just a little bit on there and then that way I can hopefully get them to solder together a little bit easier. But um, doing that now, uh, the bad thing, the thing that sucks, I'm so mad about this, but it's really my own fault based on ignorance, is um, I did not realize that the battery ends did not have uh, the connectors um, either with the battery or with I don't know the the ESC I don't know I just figured that the the bullet connectors would be included so I don't have bullet connectors now to put on the ends of these to plug into the battery so once I do get it all friggin set up I can't even run it tonight or play with it or test it or try and do any anything with it so um, but also I'm not sure whether or not I need uh, like um, to uh, have it programmed uh, maybe I don't know the ESC or um, I'm not sure um, something about a program card and I did not see a program card in the box um, so uh, all this is new to me with all the electronics and the, the motors and batteries and all the wiring and all that I'm used to running nitro and that was just you know put gas in the tank and pull start it or you know, start it with the glow plug igniter and rip it until it runs out of gas. So <laughs> this is a little bit different, but uh, I've got my, uh, like I said, I've got my ESC on there with my wiring done. I've got my little um, receiver here for my radio with the uh, wiring on that that I kind of spiraled as well. Um, I need to actually affix that somewhere so it doesn't end up getting caught in stuff. Anyway, uh, I got to hide that wiring somewhere. Before I had it kind of up in here, um, you know, through some of those little holes that I'm not using in the body magnet post. So I might put it back in there. Um, but yeah, got the motor on there. Uh, I got my drift gyro on here, which I promise it was straight when I put it on there. It just looks crooked from this angle, I think. Um, I picked up the tires that I need to run. Uh, I'm out at uh, Drift America. RC at the track that uh, they run there. They run these uh, snipers, uh, top line sniper. Uh, and these are the standard tire that everybody runs up there. So I uh, picked up a set of those. Also picked up a set of uh, some variable offset wheels. So I might be doing that uh, next and, you know, working on that anyway. Uh, I get up in the morning, I guess I'm just going to go up there. I'll, uh, buy some of the uh, bullet connectors. All right, so I just had to go pick up the last few pieces. I uh, did not realize that um, the motor, battery, ESC, uh, none of those items came with little uh, bullet connectors to hook them together. So I had to go pick those up so that I could um, solder them onto my wires here and throw them in the battery. And then I should fully have it done and uh, be able to actually turn it on and start it. So. Uh, pretty excited. It has been a long time coming so far. It's been about a two-week period for me to get this thing completely and fully built and get all the parts and electronics and everything that I needed. And uh, unfortunately, I did not make it to the Matsuri. I mean, I did. I showed up, you know, just to check it out for a little bit, uh, pick up a couple of these bullet connectors, um, and then bailed because it was a pretty packed house, actually, and there's a lot going on, and I was just kind of was uh you know in the way we there with my with my car while i was hanging out so i uh, decided to just take off so that way i could come back and get the um connectors on and hopefully get this thing actually started up and then start tuning it um, i'm excited to drive it i'm no uh soldering professional so i definitely don't have a lot of equipment i mean this is my soldering iron it's just a tiny little you know um i don't even know what brand it is honestly uh oh that one so uh anyway um that's my soldering iron i don't have like all the little tools to hold stuff with clips and all that so uh to hold these bullet clips basically i just took a little box punched a couple holes in them and uh i'm just gonna set the bullet clips in there like that to go ahead and hold them straight and hold them up um, and then that way i can hopefully get the cables soldered on there easily. I went ahead and put a drop of water around there because I know it gets pretty hot with the soldering iron, so I didn't want it to 
actually start burning the box and fall in while I'm working on it. So uh, I put water on there. Hopefully I can get it done before I get soggy and they fall in anyway. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, that's what I'm doing. All right, well, that worked pretty well. Um, it did. I'm glad I did put the water on there because it got the metal hot enough, of course, that it dried out the water within just a couple of seconds. So I'm glad I did that so that way it didn't actually burn up you know, the box or start to smoke and I had to have that in my face. But All right, so got those soldered on there. They're now cooled off enough that I can go ahead and handle them. So um, I, before I had even um, started or whatever, I had uh, done some real tiny shrink wraps on the ends uh, just to be able to keep the wires straight and identifiable without having to look at the ESC over and over. Um, and then what I did was I went ahead and dropped another larger one over top, which I'm going to go ahead and work its way down onto here and uh, push that all the way down to the bottom of the connector there. Um, I'm going to heat shrink those in place, and then when I'm done with that, I've got these tiny little slivers that I've cut, which I'm going to put over the top, and that's going to seal these two together and then that way it's got a nice stepped look and uh, will look like a professional installation um, with the heat shrink tubing all the way to the end, nice clean, can't see the solder. So I think it'll look pretty cool. All right, so there we go, got it all done. It is now soldered and heat shrinked with adhesive wrap. So it's also highly waterproof and now, in addition, I've got something with a little bit of substance to grab onto that's a little thicker right here uh, whenever I go to pull those out. And uh, with them being soldered and then double wrapped, they should also have um, some pretty good resilience to uh, that opening or tearing or anything like that. So, uh, those are on. My battery is charged and I am about to turn it on and uh, hopefully it doesn't um, drive off on its own. All right, so got it all put together. Um, I did uh, turn it on already and do the binding and um, some settings and programming, but I'm not real familiar with how all this stuff works uh, since I'm not really an electric guy. I um, previously have used uh, nitro vehicles and they were pretty much preset. So um, I did uh, go ahead and, like I said, take care of a few things. I'm going to power it on. Everything seems to be good. My gyro is green. I did not set the RPM limits on this thing yet. Uh, I don't have a program card, and I'm not real familiar with doing it um, on the actual ESC itself. So I may just take it up to uh, Drift America and see if I can get some, uh, some assistance since uh, they're going to be much more familiar with this and, uh, you know, know probably the best way to set it up for me as a as a beginner so um, yeah um, but I had I did have to uh, go ahead and do some changes on the like the trim settings and whatnot things like that so my gyro is working obviously uh, I might have to turn down the steering it seems a little aggressive functionality and power so that's good pretty pretty stoked to have it done